Well, uh, joining us now live from Standard Bank's trading floor is Nomvuya Guma. She's macroeconomic strategist at Standard Bank. And Nomvuya, thanks so much for joining us today. Some strength coming through uh, on the local unit today. Of course, we've seen optimism uh, filter through and risk appetite back in play on a globals, uh, to a global uh, extent. So uh, that having some bearing, what are you making of the kind of activity we've seen uh, so far on the local unit front? Uh, hi, Alicia. Yes, you're right. I mean, the RAND took a bit of a pummeling last week, and it was a combination, once again, of both domestic and international events. Internationally being the contagion from Cyprus really put investors in a very risk-off mood, and I think that sentiment kind of swept across and, and really hammered uh, particularly emerging market currencies. And as usual, the RAND, you know, fell the hardest. But also, the RAND was impacted by, you know, ongoing domestic, uh, ongoing domestic concerns. So that would be uh, continuing labor unrest, and in particular, the fact that this labor unrest uh, centered at Exaro, uh, one, and, and their coal mines are one of the major suppliers of coal to ESCOM, which, as we know, is battling very low and precarious um, reserve capacity at the moment. So all of those concerns, I think, kind of combining and really putting the RAND on the back foot for last week. We saw it hit a low of about 9 Rand 33. But as you've mentioned, it's come back quite strongly this morning. I think there is renewed optimism over Cyprus. Seems that they were able to secure a bailout package. Um, and for now, it does seem that some optimism has returned as regards to that scenario. So that is propping up the, the RAND for the moment. However, for the rest of the week, there are still some continuing risks. The domestic situation remains uh, you know, as dangerous as it was last week. And then, of course, we have some data that could also potentially trip up the currency. So for now, it certainly does seem to be firming, um, but there's some still some event risks ahead for the currency. I highlighted a little earlier that we're anticipating quite a bit of economic data this week, non for your trade numbers, money supply numbers, uh, credit data and PPI figures as well. Uh, just how closely are you watching uh, this data given the fact that as you highlight, we've got a lot of focus, yes, on the global arena and international uh, news headlines that are doing the rounds, but uh, just as much focus on what's at play within our borders. Yeah, I mean, I think certainly from a currency point of view, the, the trade balance numbers have been, you know, very important for some time insofar as they feed into monetary policy decisions. And so I don't think that this number is going to be any exception. We've penciled in a deficit of about 10 billion rand. This would be for the month of February. Um, and that's less than half of the 24 billion rand that we saw in January. And really our reasoning is based on the fact that one traditionally sees a bit of a pickup in exports in February that tend to collapse in January given seasonal slow down. So the pickup in exports that we're anticipating for February should somewhat help uh, some compression in the trade balance. And I think as far as the currency is concerned, that is going to be one of the preeminent uh, figures to watch. As you know, the Reserve Bank is very concerned um, about the, the size of the current account deficit. And given that the trade balance is such a huge component of the current account, uh, I think that the trade numbers are definitely going to be something to watch uh, probably for the entire year. How closely are you watching conversations unfold at the BRICS summit currently? and away in Durban for you. Well, of course, it's also one of the things that we're looking at this year. At, of course, you know, a summit of global leaders and a grouping such as BRICS is always going to be headline-making news. And particularly, it seems that they're, they're quite bent on making a go of this development bank that's going to stand as more as a, of a developing world bank, it seems, as almost a, a rival or, or contrast to the World Bank and IMF. And we know that developing countries have had their issues of, of complaining of a lack of representation at these banks. So I think it'll be very interesting to see see what moves are made on this front, as well as what possible trade or other uh, political uh, agreements come out of the summit.